Coach Hoffman said the other day that Jalen Ride kind of uh, put an emphasis on, on his vision and how that's improved. Just kind of what have you seen out of him in that aspect? Well, a lot of good things. First of all, you know, Jalen Wright has grown tremendously as an inside the tackle runner. You know, when he first got here, he was a guy that really wanted to bounce runs. A lot of that is probably what they asked him to do in high school. So what you see now is a guy that's a lot more intensive about, you know, going through the whole pressing the double team, things like that. Just like all those different things running through the smoke. That's what we talked to a lot of Jay Wright the last couple of years. And like, you just seen the growth in his game a ton. Patrick Dan Ben. Jerry, when you, you talk about Cam Sell back in the spring, you kind of talked about him having to start almost from the ground up because he hadn't played running back really in a long time. What, what kind of growth have you seen from him mentally over the summer and, and into camp? No question. Every practice, he gets a little bit better. Uh, you know, not having a baseline like I talked about in the spring, you know, working with them over the summertime, working with them all through camp, being able to get quality reps. You know, I talk about in the staff meeting a lot of times, Cam is a guy that needs to play in front of the big five linemen as much as humanly possible. That means every opportunity he gets to, you know, have those guys out in front of him and understanding leverage and understanding pad level, like that's going to be huge for him. And, and the only way he's going to continue to grow is really just continue to play football. You know, he's really good out in space on the perimeter. I think he's got some comfort zone there but like at the end of the day big strong physical guy like if he keeps developing you know as a as a runner he's got a chance to be a really good player Jerry with Jabari how have you seen him improve this offseason and as far as veteran like that is is it about perfecting his craft or, or is he working on different things over the offseason how do you all approach that with a veteran like him yeah you know I think the first thing was Jabari understanding some of his deficiencies you know and, and that's you know the health piece you know, he got that addressed in the offseason. The next part is, you know, all these guys, you know, have aspirations to go on to the National Football League. And he's approached on the field and off the field. He's really approached everything like a pro. You know, I've seen a, a tremendous growth in the meeting rooms, not only just what his assignment is and what he wants to do, but Jabari is also very, uh, very good at understanding the blocking schemes, understanding what the offensive lineman job is, what the receiver's job, job is, like all those different things. He's really grown in the offense, you know, going into year three. I think he, he's been in it now. So like understanding like his job and his responsibility is pretty easy. Now he's trying to be a pro and an expert and understand the whole how everything fits together. Reese and Rob, Jerry in the back here. Uh, for a running back like Deshaun Bishop that's young, how much does an injury like this affect him when his development when he doesn't get the reps in practice? Well, you know, obviously you, you need reps to actually get better. And, and, and that's, you know, we're a little heartbroken about that because, man, that guy was really doing a, a good job for us. He was coming along. You know, we had really high hopes for him, you know, in the first part of the season. Hopefully he, he maybe get an opportunity to come back this season at some point in time. But I do think, you know, you should treat it like a red shirt year. You know, it's a chance for him to get in the meeting room. It's a chance for him to continue to grow just his baseline as far as in our system and, and what we want. And I, I have no, you know, I have no reserve about saying, like, he's going to come back in the spring uh, and, and be a, probably a different player just for the simple fact He's going to understand all the ins and outs, things that he did not understand quite as well, really during the during the previous spring. Coach, you got three guys obviously who've done, who've got it done in the SEC and two talented freshmen mix. Do you have a feel yet for how many guys you can realistically play? Well, you know, the running back position just you know through attrition, sometimes guys get bumps and bruises. You know, obviously, you know, we we all feel like those guys are three down back, so we feel like they can play. You know, every down, we don't have to rotate guys in for short yardage and pass pro and things like that. All of them have grown. Uh, right now, it's really tough to say. You know, you, you know we, how we've played here in the past. We rotated, usually had a two-headed monster, and you know, Dylan Sampson was able to get in the rotation last year and really have some great success. So it really just depends on the floor of the game. You know, one thing about running backs, if a guy has a hot hand, you want to keep him in. Uh, it's that, so that's no different than what we're trying to do. If a guy is really in a rhythm, you know, I, I'll be crazy to take that guy out. I got to continue to get the most out of him while he's in a rhythm. But I do foresee, you know, we're going to need all those guys as the season progresses. Adam then Austin. Was it your intention to make sure that Jalen and Jabari were interchangeable, that uh, pass play, run play, both those guys could do the same thing? And is that are they more interchangeable now than they were two years ago? They definitely are, first of all, they're definitely more interchangeable than a year ago. Uh, you know, Jalen has really grown as a pass protector. He's grown with his hands. He can catch the ball out the backfield now. Jabari's grown as a pass protector, so I don't feel like he has a lot of deficiencies from that aspect. Uh, the goal is always to, to recruit, to, to always have three down backs in your room. Guys you feel like are athletic enough to catch the ball out the backfield. But at the same time, there's a short yardage situation and those pass pro situations where you know you're going to get some of those exotics and things like that, that those guys are still stout enough.
enough, big enough and strong enough to really hold up and not get blown back into the quarterback. And I think over the years, that's what you've seen. Like both of those guys' games, are, both of them are playing at a really high level right now. Yeah. Well, you know, first of all, you know, Jalen, you know, just his growth, like like I said before, in high school, he did not, he just wasn't an all around runner. He wasn't an every down back. And that's what you've seen him really be intentional about trying to work those things that he, those deficiencies that he need to work on. Uh, he's going to be one of the poster boards in our program, I think, for a guy that came in extremely raw on and off the field. And now what you've seen him do is grow into a complete, complete player on and off the field. Uh, as far as Jabari goes, uh, Jabari is a guy that, you know, he had no no reps really in the spring at all. He hadn't played football before this camp until since uh, probably December the bowl game. So a little bit different than Jacob Warren's situation. Jabari needed to get hit. You saw last year what happened to Jalen Wright when he didn't practice all the camp, and you know he had those fumbling issues early in the season. So we learned from our mistakes as coaches. So like make sure that now Jabari is going to get in there. He's taking some inside drill, which normally he doesn't take. He needs to get that thump, feel that pad, feel those pad on pad, and uh, be able to finish plays. So you know, and he has wanted that. Like he, he saw what happened to Jalen last year, and he didn't want that to happen to him this year. So you know, he has embraced the contact more than anything else. Man, big, strong, powerful guy. You know, he is everything that, you know, when we recruited him, we thought he could be. You know, he came in about 225, between 225 and 230. Uh, he's continued to keep, you know, maintain about that body weight, and he can move with it. He plays with it. You know, one thing about him, he does have really good hands. You know, he was a former basketball player in high school, too, really athletic. Uh, his deal is really just learning our system and how we go about doing things here at Tennessee. I think as a player, I mean, you're going to see that guy involved in a lot of special teams, I feel like, this year. Uh, Coach Eck is extremely excited about his role on what it can be as a runner you know he is a lot further along than I really even anticipated as a runner right now uh, running between the tackles you know that guy right that guy right there people don't want to come up and tackle him too much uh, he just got to continue to learn to get himself into shape play his way into shape more than anything else and he's gonna he's gonna contribute I feel like this year for us in some kind of capacity Jerry, I want to ask you about Jalen's ball security and just in hindsight y'all chalk those fumbles up to him just not Well, you know, he he really, you know, locked in probably about mid-season last year. Uh, and I think after he probably locked in, maybe after the LSU game, I don't think he had any more issues from a ball security issue as far as, like, at least the ball coming out. Uh, I do. I do think a lot of that was not being able to get hit at all during the month of August and not understanding that impact and where those bodies were going to come from all the time. Uh, you know, taking some of those things for granted a little bit, uh, squeezing the ball, making sure it's secure. So I do, I think a lot of that was, was th those issues. Uh, I have not seen, honestly, I haven't seen them fumble, not even in practice, to be honest with you at all, since the, at probably mid-season of last year. Adam, and then Wes. You've obviously had a, a two-man rotation, at least in the regular rotation, with Jalen and Jabari. For Dylan Sampson to get in that and make it a three-man rotation, what about his skill set could get him into that? And what deficiencies does he have that can maybe keep him out? Well, you know, that's going to get him into it is, like, Dylan can do everything for us. Like, Dylan can go out and flex out in the slot. He can play in the backfield, obviously. Um, from a pass pro, that's probably one of the things that just got to make sure that, you know, Dylan is, is spot on uh, with what he's supposed to do. And, and those smaller guys, you know, Sam has, has increased his weight. He's about 195 pounds now. Uh, still probably a little bit lighter than we would like, but it is increasing and it is going up. But the biggest thing for him is going to be in pass pro. He's got to be able to eat up the cushion. Don't let those 230, 240 pound linebackers get started. You know, stop those guys before they can get their feet moving and drive and close that cushion and then go ahead and strike. Because he's not afraid of contact. You know, Sam could play defense. He could play corner if he really wanted to. I mean, he, he will stick his face in there, and he's not afraid of it. Here, obviously, a player would, would rather not be hurt, but the fact that Jabari's had to play through some stuff the past couple of years, it just seems 
like when his teammates speak about him, they speak really highly of sort of his commitment to things and how he'll play through stuff. How, how much can you speak to just the, the respect level that, that he seems to have among his teammates? Well, he's a quiet leader. You know, he's not a rah-rah guy. Jabari's not going to be the loudest all the time. You know, he just kind of leads by example. He's the first one in the meetings. He brings a pad. He's taking notes. Like, you know, and guys respect those guys that are pros. They, they look at those guys. They see those guys. Everybody thinks you got to be the guy that's always loud and always rallying the troops. And, and that's just not Jabari's demeanor. That's not his personality. But I have seen him, you know, continue to come out of his comfort zone and continue to grow as a leader here since we've been in Tennessee. And I think that's a compliment to him. You know, he's got great parents, got great stock. So, you know, he knows what he has to do to take that next step. And, you know, the teammates see it. You know, his teammates understand that, like, this guy right here, you know, that's, that's who I would like to be like from a standpoint of just the way he goes about carrying his business. All right. Thank you.